we were we were detanking the hydrogen and the oxygen and the water fuel and stuff. And when we got to this one tank, we we just turned the heaters on and it was supposed to come out the oxygen and the gas was supposed to come out the top. Or the electric was supposed to come out the top. Well, it didn't come out the top. And there were there was a pipe like this, another pipe over here like this, close together. And this little bitty piece of plastic, which was supposed to fit on here and there and get the thing to go out like that, must have fallen out. So we couldn't detank the thing normally. So we had to get the oxygen out of there. It's not a good thing to leave that stuff around. Ah, excuse me, man. So um, we, we turned the heaters on. We were going to gasify the liquid oxygen by making it hotter. And so we let them run. Well, there's a, there was a temperature sensor that was supposed to tell you when it overheated or not. Well, the heaters are going on and off, and this micro switch is arcing. And pretty soon it arcs itself together. It's welded together. So now the temperature goes up. And the guys down at the cave watching this thing are watching the temperature gauge, which goes up to 80, which is where it was supposed to go up to and down. Well, unfortunately, the damn temperature gauge only went to 80. <laughs> so the temperature gauge went to 80, and the temperature in the tank, who knows how high it got. And it probably charred the wires that went to the fans and to the heaters. And so we flew uh, a lot of these things with the heaters on and the fans on, so it wasn't a big deal. Except in this case, when they turned the fans on, or whatever they turned on, I think it was the fans, the, the, the wires were in there, and they must have touched something else and shorted out. And in, in zero G, you don't have a flame that looks like this. You have one that looks like this, it's round. But, and there's no up or down, so you don't see something running out like you do here on Earth. But apparently the um, flame propagated up this tube, and when it got to the top of the tank, uh, you can't have a circle tank without a hole in it. So we had a cylindrical thing on the top with all the wiring and stuff that went in, the pipes that came out. And when the pressure started building up, the, the sphere can hold a lot of pressure more than it was at. But the, the top, could, and it probably blew off. And then when the gas gets, you know, there's, no, there's nothing in the, in the service line, it's just a vacuum. So when the top blew off, or the whole tank blew up, all this liquid oxygen turned into gas, which put the, the pressure inside the service line, went sky high, blew the panel out. And as I mentioned earlier, we always have we, we always had a redundancy. So one tank was fuel was had a fill port here, another one had a fill port here, but they were on a small panel. And when the big panel blew off, it bent that, it cracked the two and another mm -hmm. tank. So that's why it leaked down. Mm -hmm. um, we found all I had a really bright guy running our test division. He's one of the smartest guys I've ever seen. And he had a bunch of guys who really weren't that, they weren't on his level. Um, <laughs> and the test division did not attract really eager guys, you know, the design division or the, or the, uh, the guys that looked after the space. So he used to give these guys a test before every flight. Give them a paper and a pencil and give them a test. And they had to work it out paper and pencil, so he, he got, got these guys thinking really good stuff. Then, uh, after I got my accident investigation thing going, the, the good guys at the headquarters decided that I, had a, I needed help. So they constituted this accident, super accident board, made, out of, uh, made up of the NASA Center Director at the Lewis Research Center in, in Cleveland, a couple Air Force generals and assorted other guys. And so they came down while we were trying to figure out what the hell happened. And uh, uh, they came over and, and uh, we had a long chat. And 
told where we were, and then they they found out the next the next day that we had a four o'clock meeting every afternoon where Don Arabian, nicknamed Arab, was running this uh, accident investigation, and we had maybe four or five hundred guys in the room. Now everybody can't talk, so we had a rule: the guys. There were a number of system gurus who had a guy, and Don would open up to me and tell, have, tell these guys to start. So you, you would get up and you'd tell what your group did, and then you'd get up and tell what your group did. No question, you've got, you know, but everybody's hearing what's going on. Well, my super accident board came down and uh, they found out about this piece, so they wanted to go to it. So I told the, the team leader, the guy from uh, the NASA center director, I told him, no questions, you understand that? Oh, we all understand it. Well, we got through the first day, okay. Second day, I think an Air Force general, hey, well, I wanted to know, what about that thing there? So I leaped out of my seat, ran over and got that center director. We went outside, I said, get those sons of bitches out of there right now or I'm going to have them carry out bodily. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a colonel at the time. I'm throwing the generals out. <laughs> and, uh, that's what they did. They went in and got them all out. And the stuff went on the way it was supposed to. I had a, a briefing every morning at 7 o'clock. And the, the super board came down to listen to what I heard. So it was an interesting thing. <laughs> and, but you heard.